Charlotte? <laughs> We're always running into her. I see. So you believe that this warning letter was sent by the Phantom Weasel? Absolutely. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The Phantom Weasel never acts as you expect. He must have faked his own death ten years ago using a body double. Now that he's back, I'm sure the guards who worked on his case back in the day are in for a headache, but however this turns out in the end, the one thing it won't be is boring. Couldn't agree more. As a journalist, I'm gonna get a lot of mileage out of this one. Thank you, sir, for your time. Now, whom should I interview next? <gasps> hey! What a coincidence! Fancy meeting you here! Perfect timing. So, the Phantom Weasel's latest warning letter. What are your thoughts? Yeah, this is the first time we're hearing of this one. Could you clue us in? Huh? Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, this case is from a decade ago. I guess you wouldn't know about it. Well, not to worry. You're in good hands because I'm a professional. The story goes like this. Ten or so years ago, a phantom thief became active in the court of Fontaine. Known only as the Weasel, nobody knew his true identity, and the authorities never managed to catch him. Wow, cool! He sounds like one of those mysterious night burglars that you read about in novels. Precisely. Well, except the part where they actually have a good reputation. Our Weasel targeted whatever people held dear, and no one was safe from his predations. He would just as soon steal a necklace from a rich merchant's safe as he would a toy doll given to a commoner child for their birthday. I know. The phantom thieves you read about in novels rob the rich to pay the poor, but this guy did not discriminate. Unsurprisingly, this didn't work wonders for his public reputation. Every man and his dog wanted to see him behind bars. Yeesh. So, uh, did they catch him? Um, not exactly. There's a good chance that the weasel would still be at large to this day if it hadn't been for an accident ten years ago. A magician named Caesar fell to his death in a botched high-altitude escape performance. When the police went through his personal effects, they found a hoard of stolen loot and gadgets used for criminal activities. And that was how the Phantom Weasel's identity was revealed to all. Sure enough, thefts and Fontaine went down after Caesar's death. But today, ten years on, the notorious thief has once again issued one of his warning letters and pasted it on the gate of the Opera Epicles for all to see. I had to squeeze through the crowd this morning to get a photo as soon as I heard. Here, it's this one. So, this is the warning letter, huh? Let's see what he wrote. Three days from now, when evening falls, I shall take from you that which you hold most dear at the Opera House. Just as you did to me ten years ago. This is, without a doubt, a clear declaration of criminal intent. After years of laying low, the Phantom Weasel is back with a vengeance. What once seemed like an open and shut case has been blown wide open again. But why has he re-emerged now? And what does he want? I sense an epic scoop. And I'm going for it. Uh-oh. If this thief will steal anything that other people value, does that mean even we might be targeted? Really? Oh, let him try. In fact, Hannah's gonna eat all her snacks right now. Let's see what he can do about that. Okay, the people have spoken. It's clear that the public are very concerned about the Phantom Weasel's reappearance. Let's see, I've got a photo of the letter, my interview notes. Yep, that should be enough to form the skeleton of my article. It does feel like something is missing, though. Something exclusive. Who should I interview next? I need someone with a more concrete connection to the Weasel. Hmm... Is that who I think it is? Lenny! Magic, magician, Caesar! <gasps> the Phantom Weasel! That's it! Let's go interview Lenny! You see, the original Phantom Thief Caesar was a magician too! 
And what do phantom thieves and magicians have in common? They both have an air of mystery about them. Perhaps there's a connection there. Are you serious? What sort of a deduction is that? Oh, relax. My journalistic instinct tells me that an exclusive news story is beckoning. Let's go. No time for delay. Wow, Mr. Magician! How did you know which card I picked? Oh, it's simple. Come closer, and I'll let you in on my secret. Magicians have a special skill called telepathy, which means we can read other people's minds. Really? Then, what am I thinking now? Well, first you need to relax, because I can see that you're clenching your fist in your mind, as if to say, no, I mustn't let him guess it. Aww. And now you're getting a little flustered. You're trying to find a way to empty your mind, to think of nothing at all. But the more you try to hide a secret, the easier it'll come out. You snuck out from home today, didn't you? You told your family a little lie so you could come out and play. Now, now, that's not a good habit. Y you can tell? Uh, oh boy, you really can read my mind. Of course. Oh, and that's the end of my performance. You should really be heading home. Remember to apologize to your family, all right? They must be worried about you. Uh, all right, got it. Bye, Mr. Magician. Why, hello. We meet again. Are you looking for me? What's the situation? Well, why don't you guess, Mr. Telepathic? Oh, please. You didn't believe that spiel, did you? The power of telepathy is quite beyond me. I'm sure that child would beg to differ. Seemed like you were right on the money. That was nothing more than a little trickery. I made an educated guess based on his micro-expressions. That, plus the fact that he was the only kid here without his parents, and he looked as guilty as sin. He made it easy for me. You guys, on the other hand... Hmm... Let me guess. Don't tell me you're here for the Phantom Weasel, are you? Wow! Cut it in one! Is this more of your trickery at work? Wait, really? <laughs> no, no trickery this time. It was pure luck. His warning letter's been the talk of the town, so I figured that maybe you were asking around about that. Bingo! I plan on writing a column reporting on the latest news about the Phantom Weasel. So, Linny, what are your thoughts on this infamous thief's reappearance? Hmm... To be honest... It makes me angry. Angry? Why? You read his letter, right? The Phantom Weasel claims he's planning something in three nights' time at the Opera House. That's the night I'll be performing there. Huh. What are the chances? <gasps> Wait a minute! You don't think he's after you, do you? Well, if he is, then his warning is clearly a direct challenge to me personally. And if he's not, then it's still going to be a huge headache for me. The mere mention of the weasel's name is enough to scare people off. So once the contents of that letter get out, barely anyone will be showing up to watch my show. But I've been preparing for this for a long time. I'm not about to let him ruin my big day. This leaves me with only one choice. I have to expose the Phantom Weasel's identity before the show begins. Really? So what you're saying is, we might get to see a live duel between a famous magician and an infamous thief? Wow, this has exclusive written all over it! To be honest, I'm not sure if I'll emerge the victor. 
The Phantom Weasel is a notorious crook, infamous for his inscrutable methods. You're being far too modest, Linny. I think your magic tricks are even more inscrutable than those of a thief. Thanks for the compliment, though I have to say, I don't care much for the comparison. A lot of people liken magicians to thieves because we both have the ability to make things disappear without the person noticing. But there's an important difference that these people overlook. Allow me to demonstrate with a quick magic trick. Here, I have a flower, just an ordinary flower that was picked not long ago. Watch it carefully now. Three, two, one. <gasps> it's gone! That's the question. Where did it go? Therein lies the difference between us. Thieves make precious things disappear, but only magicians make them reappear. If I could now invite you all to check your clothes, there might be a surprise in there somewhere. A surprise? Let me see! <gasps> it's right there! But how? You haven't moved this whole time! What an outstanding trick! Sorry, Linny, it seems that my previous praise was woefully inadequate. Clearly, magic is the superior art form to theft. Don't worry, I didn't take offense. I just wanted to take the opportunity to perhaps change some of the preconceived notions you might have about magicians. Since Caesar's death, a lot of people associate magicians with criminality. It can be quite frustrating. I can imagine. Um, coming back to your trick just now, might I presume that you are well versed in floral symbolism? For example, magicians often use rainbow roses in their flower-related performances to represent passion and romantic encounters. But you used a loony do spell, which, if I'm not mistaken, allude to separations. I'm curious to know if there was any deeper meaning behind this choice? Impressive knowledge. It's no wonder you're such a successful journalist. But I'm afraid I don't know the first thing about floral symbolism. I'm just in the habit of using Lumidu spells in my magic. It sounds like something I should look into, though. Hmm. I'll buy myself a copy of Fontaine's Floral Language Facts when I have some time. But it'll have to wait until this phantom weasel business is behind us. Well noted. In that case, this brings us to the end of our interview. I, for one, am looking forward to the final showdown between you and the thief. Please feel free to get in touch to update me on any further developments. Otherwise, I will of course see you at your show in three days' time. But let's hope the Phantom Weasel is caught by then. If there's nothing else, uh, I'll be off. You've given me lots to work with here, and I've got no time to lose if I want to write that exclusive piece. I'll see you all later! So, uh, Lenny, are you going to tell us how you did that flower trick now? <laughs> I'm afraid that's my little secret. Aww. Well, magicians are entitled to their secrets. But Paimon's really itching to know how it's done. You feel it too, right? So itchy. <laughs> Not so itchy then, huh? Well, since you're so concerned, how would you like to serve as my temporary magician's assistant and help me investigate? Magician's assistant? Oh, that sounds fun! Assistants are technically magicians too! Also, it'll bring us one step closer to figuring out how that darn trick is done! Shall we go for it? The first thing we need to look into is who Caesar really was. If he truly was the Phantom Weasel, that means that the Weasel is dead, and whoever wrote this warning letter is just a copycat criminal. But if he wasn't the Weasel? Hmm. Well, that'll make things more interesting. It would mean that the Weasel lives, and he's been laying low all this time in some corner of Fontaine. And if we're investigating Caesar, his fiancée Gemma is a good place to start. Word is that she visits the cemetery often, so I asked Lynette to wait for her there. We should make a move. Let's go and rendezvous with Lynette. <sighs> you 
You took your time. Sorry. I bumped into the Traveler and Charlotte en route, and we ended up chatting for a while. It's been a while, Lynette. We're working as Lenny's temporary assistants in the investigation of the Phantom Weasel. Thank you. It's good to have you helping. So, what's the situation? Have you seen Gemma? Nope. I've been here a while, and she still hasn't shown up. How bizarre. Maybe it was bad intel. Well, we won't get anywhere by standing around waiting. Traveler, Paimon, let's go ask around. I'll wait for you here and see if Gemma shows up. Excuse me, good sir. Do you by any chance know a Gemma? Gemma? You mean Caesar's fiance? Sure I do. What's this about? I'm just trying to get a hold of her because I need her help with something. I heard she comes here a lot. Yeah, she does. <sighs> Poor thing. It's no secret why either. She's heartsick. Ever since Caesar passed away, she's been coming here once every week to clean his grave. Often she just sits there in front of his headstone, lost in thought. Sometimes she talks to herself. I asked her what she was doing once. She said she wanted to speak to him again. She knows he's gone and can't hear her from the grave, but she just likes to spend time there, telling her fiancé all about how her life is going. And she's been doing this ever since Caesar passed away? Oh, so ten years. Wow, their love must have been really strong. I'll bet. Caesar's reputation fell apart after his identity was revealed, so no one else visits his grave. Gemma's the only one who still thinks about him after all these years. I don't know if the mind lives on in the waters after death, but if it does, I'm sure Caesar must be grateful to have someone who remembers him fondly. If I'm honest, I think this is all so unfair to poor Gemma. Her fiancé was a low-life crook. He doesn't deserve someone like her. Anyway, all of that said, She's running later than usual today. Normally, she'd be sitting in front of his grave by now. I wonder if she's okay. Well, that's everything I know, I'm afraid. You might have more luck asking some other people. All right, well, thanks for sharing all of this with us. We'll keep asking around. You're welcome. I just hope she'll be able to move on one day. Did you hear the news? They're saying the Phantom Weasel's back. You're kidding. Wait, isn't he dead? I don't know anymore. All sorts of news flying around nowadays. I can never tell what's true and what isn't. But what if, just hypothetically, I mean, what if this Weasel's the real deal and Caesar was framed? Called it. Seriously, 10 years ago on the day it all went down, I said to myself, you know what? This guy's been set up. The Caesar I knew was a good guy. He gave balloons to children on the street for Pete's sake. What, are we supposed to believe that he was a balloon thief or something? Give me a break. Oh, please. Weren't you the one cursing his name to high heaven when the police announced the news? You were all, oh, that gosh darn lousy son of a, oh, you think you know a guy, or words to that effect. Wait, did I say that? Hmm. I don't seem to recall. Hello there. Sorry for disturbing you, but I couldn't help but notice you were discussing the Phantom Weasel. We're actually quite interested in this topic as well, but we're struggling to get to the bottom of it. Do you think you could spare a moment to tell us a little bit about Caesar? You've come to the right people. Yep, I was there. Back when Caesar used to perform magic tricks on the street. He was a great magician. The best trick I ever saw him do was pop a transparent balloon, only for a whole bunch of doves to fly out from the inside. I was right up close and didn't blink or look away once. But for the life of me, I still don't have the faintest clue how he pulled it off. Really incredible stuff. 
I saw him perform too. He always used to bring some gifts along for the kids who came to watch his show, and he'd hand them out after he was done. Sometimes, he even got the kids to write their wishes down, and then he'd make the items on the wish list appear in his next show. Huh. He doesn't sound like such a bad guy. But after he died, there were also rumors that he used the wish list to find out what was precious to people, with the intent to steal it later. As I'm sure you know, the Phantom Weasel would steal just about anything from anyone. Whatever the case, now that the Weasel is back, Caesar's become a hot topic once more. I bet Gemma must be pleased. If Caesar's name gets cleared, maybe it'll finally give her some solace after all this time. No, speak of the devil. That's her over there. If you've got any more questions about Caesar, she's definitely the one to ask. So that's Gemma. Uh, is it just Paimon, or does it look like something's wrong? Wait, it looks like she's injured. Come on, let's see if she's okay. <laughs> Gemma, right? <sighs> Who's asking? Don't be afraid, we mean no harm. It looks like you're injured. How bad is it? <sighs> Thanks for your concern, but you didn't answer my question. Who are you, and what do you want with me? My name is Linny, and this is my sister Lynette. We're investigating the Phantom Weasel. The Weasel posted a warning letter this morning. If he still lives, that means that Caesar was falsely accused. You knew Caesar better than anyone else. So if you're willing, we'd love to hear what you think about all this. <sighs> I promise you can trust us. We won't hurt you. In fact, we'll do all we can to keep you safe. I... I never believed that he was the weasel. Huh. I suspected as much. Okay, so going back ten years, do you remember anything strange in the weeks leading up to the accident? Did Caesar have a falling out with anyone, for instance? No. Not that I know of. <laughs> Got it. All right. Sorry for disturbing you. <sighs> If you don't have any more questions, please leave. I want to be alone with him. Judging by the look on her face, there's definitely something fishy about her. She's lying. She definitely knows something. That's fair. We're just a bunch of strangers who showed up and started questioning her about things that happened a whole decade ago. It makes sense that she'd be wary around us. In any case, I doubt we'll get any further here, so let's call it a day. Meet me outside Hotel de Boer tomorrow, and then we'll start the next step of our plan. Over here! Lynette's not joining us today? I've had her follow Gemma and see if we can make any inroads with her. They should be at a cafe right now. Still, I don't think that Gemma's likely to open up to us. <sighs> so, we need a contingency plan. Today, we'll be looking into a guy named Lorenzo, Caesar's former pupil and assistant. When Caesar passed away, all the stolen goods discovered in his home were confiscated and returned to their rightful owners. But Lorenzo was the only one privy to all his magic secrets, and he inherited his craft. Before long, Lorenzo was the next big magician in town, his fame surpassing even that of his master, and it made him very wealthy. He's since left the magic scene, though, and these days, he's a wealthy businessman with his fingers in a lot of different pies. 
I had to pull a lot of strings, but I managed to get him to agree to a couple of drinks with me. Be warned, though. I hear he's got a hair-trigger temper. We'd best be careful. You neglected to mention that you were bringing two other people with you. My apologies. These two are my assistants. When they heard that I was meeting with the former magic maestro himself, they begged and pleaded with me to bring them along. Um, and if it's no trouble, a couple of autographs would really make their day. Oh, forget the pleasantries. Just sit. Get a load of this guy. Forget the pleasantries, he says, but he looks pretty happy about Lenny stroking his ego. I only agreed to meet since we're both magicians. Do me a favor and cut to the chase. I have more important things to do than drinking. Much obliged, sir. As it happens, the matter I want to address is also related to magic. Yesterday morning, a warning letter from the Phantom Weasel appeared on the entrance to the Opera House. He claims to be planning something for the same evening that I'm scheduled to do a magic show there. As such, I believe that I may well be his target. I have to get to the bottom of this to ensure that my show can go ahead as planned. Naturally, any investigation into the weasel starts with a few questions about Caesar, who... What is there to investigate? Caesar was the weasel and he's been dead for ten years. So what if some sick creep thought it'd be funny to write a warning letter? It changes nothing. Are you trying to tell me you actually bought it? Please, sir, no need to get so worked up. I do concede that a copycat is but one possibility. Possibility? It's a fact, Linny. Look, my patience is limited, so listen carefully while I'm still willing to put up with you. The weasel is dead. Period. Everyone knows that, so do yourself a favor and quit this investigation. It'll lead you nowhere. Look, if this affects your magic show in any way, I will personally compensate you for any losses. Oh, sir, I'm honored, really. But this isn't about finances for me. My pride as a magician is what's at stake here, Lorenzo. Copycat or not, this person has thrown me the gauntlet, and I must meet their challenge head on. Your pride? <laughs> Don't mince words with me, boy. Just tell me what exactly are you seeking to do. I want to find out the Phantom Weasel's true identity. I have to know for myself what really happened ten years ago. What would that accomplish? And what do the events of ten years ago have to do with you, anyway? Look, you of all people should know that a magician never reveals their secrets. And in any case, dead men don't talk. So if you really care about your magician's pride, then you'll forget about Caesar and move on. Uh... This is getting awkward. Renzo? Is that? Oh, it is you! <laughs> I know that big, uh, booming voice anywhere. <laughs> What's up, my man? Wanna grab a drink with me? Another day, I'm busy. Aw, oh, come on! You can't be all business all the time. You know what they say live fast! Die, young. <gasps> you gotta learn how to kick back and relax once in a while. If I wanted your life advice, I'd ask for it. Now get out of my face and go be drunk somewhere else. Sorry, my good sir. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Oh, hey. Um, Edmondo. He and I are business pals. We work together a bunch of times. This is your first time meeting him? Oh, he's always like this. Foul mouth and hard nose. Never heard a kind word out of this guy the whole time I've known him. Uh, and he wonders why he can't get a girlfriend, despite being, what, pushing 40, 30, something? Anyway, point is, a lot older than when he first got rejected by the girl he was into. And He's still into, from what I hear. Shut up and get out of my face. Another word out of you and you can forget about doing business with me ever again. Do I make myself clear? 
<laughs> uh, sorry, I may have had a little too much to drink. <laughs> All right, I I'm, I'm gonna leave. Don't work too hard. <laughs> I think it's high time I made a move as well. If you really want to investigate this, Linny, be my guest. But if nothing good comes of it, don't say I didn't warn you. Well, that fell to pieces in a rather spectacular fashion. Any thoughts? for your losses. Why would someone you just met make an offer like that? He's gotta be hiding something. And not like Gemma. She was a little suspicious, but this guy's definitely covering something up. I think so too. We need to look into Lorenzo more closely. That guy Edmondo seems to know a thing or two about him. He only just left. Let's see if we can catch up with him. <laughs> you okay there? Uh, who are you? Oh, it's you guys. Don't worry about me. I must have had one too many. Uh, I just need to ride it out. <laughs> I say way too much back there, didn't I? Yeah, I nearly talked myself into complete financial ruin. <laughs> Note to self, no more drunken chats when Lorenzo's around. So, he was serious about threatening to cut you off? Ugh, Paimon knew he was a bad egg. Hey, 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 Just keep your voice down. Don't go prying into Lorenzo's personal affairs. <laughs> bad things happen to people who ask too many questions. Or make an enemy out of him. What kind of bad things? Don't even ask. I'm sorry, uh, I'm gonna have to cut this conversation short. I'm not crossing that line again. And take it from me, trouble with Lorenzo is one thing you don't need in your life. There's some flare up back there. I don't know what you said to him, but clearly it touched a nerve. That's not a good sign. You're, you're too young for this. And don't get in over your head. I'm leaving. being watched. Someone was listening in to our whole conversation. Don't say anything and don't look back. Any altercation in the city will attract the guards. We better take this elsewhere. You followed us a long way. Why don't you come out and introduce yourselves? So you're Linny. And where's your sister? Ain't she with you today? Save us the trouble and go fetch her for us. Let's not drag this out. Hyman doesn't like the tone of your voice, mister! Who sent you, huh? Save your questions, missy. You ain't gonna need answers where you're going, capiche? <sighs> Looks like we can't avoid this fight. Now, I'm not the strongest fighter, so I hope you're ready to back me up. Don't worry, we got this! Curses. They're tougher than we thought. Vision wielders are always trouble. Intimidation ain't gonna work like it did on the lady. Come on, let's scram! Hey, wise guys! We ain't through with you yet! Oh, they got away! <sighs> did you catch what they said just before they left? Something about intimidating someone else. Sounds like they just wanted to rough us up as a scare tactic, and they've already done it to someone else, but who? You're right. She was injured when we saw her yesterday, and she acted like she had something to hide. Maybe she was too scared to tell us the truth because those guys had threatened her. Hmm. 
Well, if that's the case, she should be more willing to open up to us when she learns that those thugs won't be bothering her anymore. Let's head back to the cafe and see if we can get any information from her. <sighs> Gemma? You again. What is it this time? We just ran into the men who've been threatening you, and we gave them a taste of their own medicine. So, you can relax now. We're here to protect you. What? Why? I didn't tell you anything. Why would they come after you? <laughs> Sounds like they're no strangers to you. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. I know them all too well, and I hate them with every fiber of my being. It's been ten long years, and still every time I try to look into Caesar's death, they show up and warn me not to do anything stupid. <sighs> How do I know I can trust you? Do you really think you can get to the bottom of it all? And why are you doing this? I'm afraid I can't reveal all the details just yet, but I can promise you this. I will expose the Phantom Weasel's true identity. Because you see, this is a personal matter of the utmost importance. I give you my word. Trust me. Okay. How can I help you? I've heard that Caesar used to have a magic workshop where he kept a lot of his personal effects. If possible, I'd like to take a look at them. Do you know where it is? The Fleuve Sondre. But the place was sealed up by the police after his death, and no one's been there since. I also know that the Fleuve Sondre is dangerous territory. Lots of hostile groups lurking around. If you're serious about going there, please be careful. Understood. Lynette, you stay here and take care of Gemma. Don't let her come to harm. <sighs> Got it. But if I'm staying here, I'm ordering dessert. I mean, bon appetit. But stay sharp, too. They're likely to come for you while I'm away. Okay. All right. Power saving mode off. I'll start taking this more seriously now. Whatever you do, please be careful. If anything happens to you because you're investigating Caesar, I'll never be able to forgive myself. If Gemma gave us the right location, then the workshop should be right nearby. Huh. Looks like these boxes are blocking the entrance. Let's shift them away first. There we go. It should be just down here. So this was Caesar's workshop. Hmm. Nothing suspicious here, just normal magic props. Let's head in further. What was that? Oh, is this one of Caesar's gadgets? Oh, guess we must have triggered some sort of device. Oh, look, the doll in the box is glowing. There's something written on the card on this doll. Let's take a closer look. One of them looks different from the rest. Let's investigate.
weird. Have we reached the end already? There's nothing here. Oh, maybe this was a wasted trip. This place seems a little too ordinary for a magician's workshop. There's a distinct lack of mystery. We've triggered quite a few devices on the way here. Hmm. I'm starting to wonder whether Caesar built this whole place as one big, elaborate magic contraption. If so, then there must be more to this place than meets the eye. Maybe a hidden room somewhere. Aha! If I just move this book, then hopefully... And... Presto! A secret passageway! How did you know? <laughs> I'm a magician too, and apparently great minds really do think alike. Looks pretty big inside. Let's head in and take a look around. Why have you stopped, Linny? Is there some device in that box? Huh. It just looks familiar somehow. Let me check this out for a second while you guys go on ahead. If anyone makes a major discovery, let's rendezvous here. Alright, see you in a bit! The placement of this device inside... Hmm... If I remember correctly... At one of my shows a few days ago, a child asked me how I pulled candy out of my hat. As a joke, I told the kid that the hat has a built-in wish-granting machine. Next thing I know, today a whole bunch of kids were pestering me to pull all sorts of things out of the hat. So I told them another white lie. The machine needs time to power up, but in the meantime you can write your wishes down. Well, they took me up on that offer. Enthusiastically. As I write this, I've only just got back from running around all over town, buying the things they wanted. Boy, are my legs sore. I wound up saving very little this month. But that's not a major issue. I now have a bigger problem. How am I going to hide all these things inside my hat? Two children came to talk to me after today's show. I don't know why they were out on their own. They looked much too young to be unsupervised. I do hope they got home safely. Anyway, they said that they wanted me to teach them how to do magic. It's not uncommon for children to ask this, of course, but I've never seen any of them as serious about it as these two. I told them that learning magic is very hard work. But that didn't faze them at all. It's like they already knew. They seemed so committed. I couldn't turn them down. It seems like something's bothering Lorenzo lately, but he won't open up to me about it. Surely he's not upset that I agreed to teach those two children. I'll have to talk him around. I have a good feeling about those kids. They're naturally talented, and it seems like they're not new to the world of magic. They have all sorts of fantastic ideas. 
All I'm really doing is helping them develop a more professional standard training plan. They wanted to call me master, but I told them they absolutely mustn't. Any magician worth their salt could have taught them what I have. They're the geniuses here. Compared to them, I don't deserve to be called any sort of master. With time, I have no doubt that they could become far greater magicians than I. My only concern is why they're so mature for their age. I fear they've had to grow up too fast. I don't dare to imagine what they must have been through. Gemma thinks so too. She doesn't like being around them. Says that their eyes are too piercing. They don't bother me, but then again, I've never been the sharpest tool in the shed. It's nearly time for me to go on tour. I asked the two kids if they'd like to come with me, but they shook their heads. I once overheard them talking about their father and their mission. Sounds like their parents have other plans for them. I guess we'll be parting ways soon. It's only been ten days since I first met them, but I think that I've gotten a feel for their personalities now. They're very tough, but also very cautious, and they trust no one but each other. This, I fear, is not a good habit to have. They hide things from me too. For example, when I asked them where they live and why they wanted to learn magic, they lied. That's the thing about children. Whenever they're trying to cover something up, it always shows somehow. I can sense that their lives have been hard, possibly even dangerous too. They're not like other children. It's a shame that I can't do more to help them. After thinking things over, I decided to tell them a bit about how I see the world. It's full of lies and falsehoods, and that is why we must find our own truth. P.S. I hope they won't find my nagging annoying. Children are so opinionated nowadays. Will it do them more harm than good for someone they've only known ten days to lecture them like that? P.P.S. Maybe I'm overthinking this. Children aren't interested in grand philosophies. It probably just went in one ear and out the other. I bet they've already forgotten every word I said. Oh, Caesar, Caesar. Just mind your own business next time. Two magic geniuses with a father and a mission, huh? Sounds a lot like he was writing about Linny and Lynette, don't you think? <gasps> so did they meet Caesar when they were kids? Let's go ask Linny! Linny! Shh, hold that thought. As I expected, there's a lot of fishy things going on in this place. Fishy? Uh-oh, what have you found? All in good time. Before we go over our new leads, I want to tell you how a high-altitude escape is performed. First, the magician slots themselves into a magic box in full view of the audience. The box is then suspended high in the air, and a short while later, the base automatically opens. At this point, a dummy will fall out of the box, but it looks real enough to grab the audience's attention, and they start wailing and screaming. Meanwhile, the real magician, who has by now blended into the crowd, waits for a good moment to make their appearance and put on a hysterical performance. Oh no! Is that me? Did I just fall to my death? Very vivid description. Paimon can really picture it. And then what? 
The audience's gaze then turns to the magician, and by the time they realize what's happened, the dummy has vanished, as if everything that just happened was some sort of shared illusion. Of course, that's just how I think the process should work, theoretically speaking. The inventor of this trick never performed it successfully. When the box opened, Caesar was the one who fell out, and not the dummy. He fell right to the ground from the highest point of the Opera House. <sighs> no one could hope to survive that fall, not without a vision at least. And no one else has ever attempted this trick since. My understanding of how it works is just based on what I could gather from his notes and the relevant gadgets here in his workshop. So Caesar's famous high-altitude escape has never been done, huh? Paimon was about to say how cool it would have been to see it in person, but if it's that dangerous, it's probably for the best that no one else tries to do it. Wait a second. So if a dummy is supposed to drop out of the box, then where does the real magician go? How does he get out? Glad you asked. That brings us to the secret of said box. This box right here is the one that Caesar constructed himself to use in the performance, and it's not as simple as it looks. Inside, there's a device that only the magician himself would know about. Once the magician's inside, and the box is lifted up into the air, the audience's view of the box is fixed at a certain angle. From where they're standing, they have a clear view of the front, sides, and bottom, but the back and the top are now no longer visible. At this point, the magician presses a button inside the box, opening a secret door out of view. He then escapes through this trap door onto the Opera House roof, waits for the dummy to fall and distract the audience, and quietly returns to ground level. That's way simpler than Paimon imagined. Even Paimon could probably do it. <laughs> well, there's a little more to it than that, of course. The hardest part of this trick is controlling the audience's mood and reactions. That takes an exceptional degree of showmanship. There's the falling dummy, the miraculous reappearance, the pompous performing. Maybe the magician would even have themselves tied up before it begins to strengthen the impression that there's no escape. Many days and nights of careful research and painstaking practice would have gone into this, all culminating in a performance just a few minutes long, but one that still manages to transform the shock and grief of a tragic accident to the joy and laughter of a mesmerizing magic trick. Caesar was a highly accomplished magician, but unfortunately, even he didn't manage to pull it off. So, how did it go so wrong? You said you found some fishy stuff here. Have you figured out what really happened? I can make a pretty good guess. I looked into the case files. The magic box Caesar was using at the time of his death had the secret button I mentioned positioned on the right-hand side. And, sure enough, he always used his right hand as his dominant hand in public. Okay. Nothing suspicious there. But here's the strange thing. Most of the devices in this workshop have the mechanism on the left-hand side, including this box right here. Which leads me to believe that Caesar was in fact left-handed. Because a magician can't afford to have their most basic habits stand out too much. People naturally focus their attention on the most important details of the task or situation at hand. But, a magician needs to be able to redirect an audience's attention at will, so as to avoid arousing their suspicion. The essence of magic is getting people to believe a lie. If even the truth raises eyebrows, the falsehoods become all the more difficult to mask. And so, Caesar trained himself to use his right hand to align with his audience's expectations. Great magic always requires sacrifices. But in his most stressful and nerve-wracking moments, and when no one was watching, Reflex would kick in and he'd use his left hand. That's why he set his gadgets with the mechanism on his left. Exactly. I think that's likely what happened. 
Caesar would have been under a lot of time pressure during the escape. He'd have had mere seconds to open the hidden compartment, retrieve the dummy, then open the secret door and make a swift escape. But I'm sure he was confident. He would have rehearsed countless times to the point where it was second nature. He'd barely need to think about what he was doing because muscle memory would guide him through. So he opened the compartment, took out the dummy, checked everything was in order, and then went to leave. With his left hand, he reached for the button, and suddenly, his heart skipped a beat. It wasn't there. Much like when you reach for your keys but find your pocket empty, his mind needed a moment to process what was going on. Instinctively, his left hand would keep feeling around for the missing button, maybe for another second or two, until the bottom of the box gave way. With the stakes being as high as they were, just a two-second delay cost him everything. The authorities would find nothing suspicious and conclude that his death was due to his own error. When in reality, someone switched the boxes and they did it to murder him! But how would they be able to make the switch without being noticed? That would be difficult to pull off, no? It would have to have been someone who knew that he was left-handed and who could move his props around without arousing suspicion. Someone who was always by his side. Isn't that right, Lorenzo? You just couldn't let sleeping dogs lie, could you? There's not a lot of people who'd go to all this trouble for some magician who died ten years ago. I didn't want to have to do this, you know. Silencing you the hard way just creates more problems for me to deal with. But I gave you your chance. I hoped you'd do what's good for you and back off like the lady, but... You disappoint me. You mean Gemma? So you are the one who's been threatening her! Yes, although however stubborn she might be, she was never much of a liability. But you people... You never even knew him, but for some reason you just wouldn't drop it. Which is why you can't leave this place alive. Take them out and make it quick. are tougher than you look. Had enough yet, Lorenzo? Your cronies can't help you now. I think it's high time you started talking. And what I'd really like to know is, why did you murder Caesar? Well, if I had a mora for every time you said that man's name. Of course you idolize Caesar. Everyone else did. But I was the real genius magician. Me! He was just an amateur who did cheap tricks for gullible children. I was the one who made magic into the fine art it is today. The aristocrats doffed their hats to me! So it was jealousy. <laughs> jealousy. Hatred, more like. I hated Caesar. All he cared about was his magic. He lived and breathed it. He poured everything into his street performances and his stupid tours like it was just a hobby to him. Never bothering to think about Mora. What sort of fool devotes their life to the art of deception and never has a Mora to show for it? But the people loved him, didn't they? Oh, how they looked up to him. No one gave me a second look. All I ever heard was, Oh, your master's amazing, isn't he? Amazing. Yeah, so amazing that he was completely broke. Every other apprentice was living it up at their master's expense, but no, not me. I put in all the work, mastered all the skills, and it brought me nothing more than the life I already had. He forbade me from using magic to trick people out of their mora. There was nothing he hated more than that. And with his reputation in Fontaine, it was too risky for me to go it alone. 
As long as he was alive, if I dabbled in my own brand of money-making magic, he would expose me, and it would destroy me. I had to kill him. There was no other way. He had to go. Hmm. And this was your only motive? It was reason enough. What other motive would I need? Well, I was under the impression that there might have been other factors at play. For instance, maybe you were in love with Gemma, but she was engaged to Caesar. In love with Gemma? D don't be ridiculous! Guess I was wrong about that then. <laughs> Next question. Are you the Phantom Weasel? I am. Caesar was... so strict with me. He insisted that his way was the right way. That the sole purpose of magic was to bring joy to the world. I never bought into any of that. I was more interested in the practical value of magic. Sure enough, it helped me fill my pockets with all kinds of valuable treasures. Oh yeah! Charlotte told us that the weasel would steal whatever people valued, no matter how much it was worth! That's just how it looked from the outside. What would any thief want with second-rate loot? I've only ever targeted high-value items. I stole cheap things as a way of practicing my craft. It was other people's overactive imaginations that conjured up the preposterous image they then dubbed the Phantom Weasel. So, that's the story, huh? Well, I hope you're ready to tell it all over again during your trial. What choice do I have? You're a pack of wolves, and you've got me between your jaws. You've seen what's here, and my last-ditch effort to stop it getting out has failed. What else can I do? So be it. I've enjoyed power and wealth for the last ten years. The likes of which Caesar could never give me. I wouldn't choose for things to end this way. But I regret nothing. Very well. In that case, I'll contact the guards. Traveler, Paimon, keep an eye on Lorenzo for me. I'll meet you just outside the workshop when I'm back. At least I can finally stop looking over my shoulder now. Lily has told me the whole story. Lorenzo, do you confess to the murder of Caesar, and to framing him for the Phantom Weasel's crimes? Hmm. <laughs> Look who's finally developed a conscience. What kind of disciple murders their own master? I hope it was worth it. Because there'll be hell to pay. <sighs> Looks like it's all over. What should we do next, Lenny? Should we start preparing for your show? Huh, let me think. Let's rendezvous with Lynette and Gemma first. With Lorenzo in custody, Gemma will no longer have to fear for her safety. Good point! We should go tell Gemma the good news right away! It'll give her some peace of mind for sure!